Lab Guy here. My video about the M1234P31 cathode ray tube did very well. Thank you to everyone who watched that and thank you to everyone who gave us a, a thumbs up. I appreciate it. I always leave that to you as your option. So, you all remember the M1234 P31. Today, I have another mystery CRT for you. This one has a bonded deflection yoke on it and bonded wires. They're actually plugged onto the pins inside there and then the whole thing was potted in RTV, clear RTV. Thank goodness it's clear. So it has a deflection yoke with four wires. It has a second anode connector and it was made by Thomas Electronics and it was manufactured in December of 1993 looking at the screen I don't know if you will be able to see it there are some faint burn marks of characters this came out of some sort of test instrument and from the terms that I can make out burned into the screen like CTS CTR DTS and so on this was some sort of serial data analyzer device that used this tube the burns are not bad at all like I said you probably can't even see them so I pinned it out like I did the last tube I candled it the electron gun is literally identical functionally to the previous tube so today, we're going to hook this guy up and light him up. Let's look at the schematic of the test setup for this tube. Again, I will be using my ICO 1030 tube power supply and my Liebold high voltage power supply. The ICO 1030 will supply the filament voltage the G1 grid number one voltage and the anode one, the first accelerator voltage. The Liebold high voltage supply will supply the second anode voltage. I will be using my two WaveTech audio function generators to drive the attached deflection yoke as shown in this diagram. Let's very quickly go over the actual equipment that I showed in the drawing. That is my ICO 1030 vacuum tube power supply, which will be powering the lower end of the gun, which includes the heater voltage, which if you'll note is wired up across both 6 volt windings, which are jumpered in series to provide us with 12 volts at 75 milliamps. This is the G1 voltage coming out of the bias output and over here on the far end, hard to see, is the B plus output and the ground. The ground is common to the regulated output and to the bias output internal to the power supply so I don't need a jumper there. These are my two audio function generators which are driving the deflection yoke. The upper one is vertical or Y and this one on the bottom is the horizontal or the X depending on whether you're a television or a graphics guy. Down here is the CRT with all of those connections wired to the electron gun and the two cables from the function generators connected to the deflection yoke. This deflection yoke is permanently bonded with RTV 
I could whittle that away and try to pull it off, but I will not. The second anode connection comes out the side of the tube and I've got it tucked under. I have a short jumper wire plugged into the female connector so that I could get a clip lead onto it going to the Liebold high voltage power supply which is currently turned off. I have my Fluke 6000 volt voltage probe and my meter ready to check that the high voltage is approximately 3 kilo volts. In small CRTs a rule of thumb is approximately 1 kilovolt per diagonal inch. This is a 3 inch CRT. Everything is in the ready for the test. So let's begin turning on power supplies. I've already got the heater voltage, 12.6 volts, connected to the tube heater and powered up. The tube is nicely warmed up. I have the cutoff bias turned up so the beam does not come on when we first activate power. The next voltage to turn on is the B+, plus, which I have set to approximately 130 to 140 volts and the next voltage to be turned on will be the high voltage power supply which is set to currently 3000 volts a little bit higher than that so now in theory when I turn the G1 bias more positive, it's currently about negative 50 volts. I will begin to turn that up towards zero volts and the beam should come on and the audio function generators are already running. There we are. And so we have a nice bright spot on the screen and note that we have green phosphor in this tube and there's no comet tail this is some phosphor that may not be P1 P1 has a little tiny bit of a, of a tail at this speed but I don't see one here so this could just be a modern version of P1 phosphor but as you can see the tube works well and the deflection yoke is good and working. Let's speed up the oscillators by 10 times. So there we are now producing a pattern, a lace issue pattern, uh, running at about 60 cycles vertical and 100 cycles horizontal and it is a uh, triangle wave. We can switch it to sine wave and make a more rounded pattern. We can play with the frequencies of the oscillators. Let's change horizontal and get some interesting effects. and then we can speed up 10 times more again and get a relatively solid pattern and switch back to triangle waves pretty cool so another mystery CRT is operating at Lab Guys World. Let's look at the diagram and see what the exact voltages are that I used to make this guy work. The voltages that I applied to the tube are 12.6 volts AC at 75 milliamps to power up the heater 
on pins 3 and 4. The cathode and the focus anode, anode number 3, are tied to 0 volts. The control grid operates anywhere between minus 10 and minus 25 volts depending on the voltage setting of anode number one which I operated in this test at plus 120 volts. For all images shown I used three kilovolts, positive three kilovolts on the second anode of the tube. The deflection yokes were driven by a pair of WaveTech function generators on their high level outputs. I don't have a number for the actual drive. This deflection yoke is a raster scanning yoke, a television style yoke, so the two coils are not equal inductance or resistance. This is how you can tell a television yoke from an XY yoke. Wasn't that exciting, boys and girls? Another cathode ray tube brought to life at Lab Guys World. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this CRT. Again, welcome to all the new subscribers and greetings to all of the current subscribers. All of you rock. Right on. So, if you know anyone who likes this kind of subject matter, please point them at my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. You know all the other cliches are, that are used on YouTube. You know what to do. So, until next time, Lab Guy out. <laughs>